Hey everybody, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean. Now, it's voting day today. It's the election. I mean, we there's no way any of us have escaped that. I would like to just personally ask that we don't have any political banter on this. The only thing that I would say is if you've not voted, you should. Um, this show can be rewatched at any time later and voting is much more important because there's something everybody, all of us, are passionate about. Even if you don't like what's going on in the political climate today, somebody, you know, is going to be better for you and your interests, whether it's, um, whether it's your children, whether it's somebody with special needs, whether it's friends with, you know, just other, anything please vote. It's it's always important to have your voice heard. And remember, not all of us have been able to vote since, you know, the, this country was founded. So it's it's a right that we've been given that, uh, that was, you know, hard fought. So please make your voice heard and vote. From here on out, though, no political talk because we don't need to bring that into the... This is supposed to be for enjoyment and fun to learn about new art, uh, you know, types of uh, genres of techniques, things that maybe you didn't know before or things you knew a little bit about. And then we're, we're going kind of beyond that to educate you. So we're going to get started. Um, today's episode is Sculpture Supplies. This is our second one. We kind of very briefly went over some of the supplies that we had and we discussed that we are going to break this down even further to make sure you're getting some education on all of these things, we're going to do this episode where we're going to talk about the armatures, how to customize them to your needs, how you actually apply clays to the armature, um, what these tools are like um, and how you use them and even kind of discuss that you can customize these yourself and how to keep your uh, sculptures safe until you either cast them or you know, if it's something you wanna keep on going that's oil clay, you know, what you can do to protect those just from the environmental elements of dust and other things we all have in our studios. So, um, so that is what this episode is about today. If you want to look at any of those supplies we're going to show, the keyword is JL175. So you go to the jerryzartorama.com website, you will type in that little search box at the top, JL175. That will bring up the list of all the supplies that we've got that we'll be talking about. And, um, and that's what we're doing. So um, before we get started, remember Art of the Carolinas, we had Sharon on last week. If you did not see that video, she like whooped up on some jelly printing, didn't she, Katie? Just like, yeah. I can't even believe what she accomplished when she was here and, and in helping her clean up, I can't believe it was only an hour that she did all of that. So if you didn't get to see that, it's a really fun episode, just just for the fact that jelly printing is something, like she said, everybody can do with uh, kids, with, you know, the elderly, anyone can appreciate and have fun with jelly printing. So uh, we did that last week and we talked about Art of the Carolinas, the virtual Art of the Carolinas we're doing this year. Due to COVID, the big main event, sadly, is canceled. So November 9th through the 14th, there's going to be workshops, three different banks of workshops of three hours each a day. Go to www.artofthecarolinas.com to find out more. And what is the last day that they can, is it the 6th or the 7th that's the cutoff date? I do not know. Okay. Actually. Um, I know that it's supposed to be two days out, I wanted to say. But I don't know if that's per two days before each class closes. Just to make sure everybody gets their, their emails with their login information and all that. Um, it probably says it on the website, yeah, so Katie's gonna, gonna look for us. But something really fun to do. You saw what Sharon got done in an hour, so That's imagine imagine three hours. So, and, and every instructor is gonna be a little different, but I just be prepared that if you take my three three-hour workshops or one of those, you're going to be working the whole time along with me and we will be talking as we work and I'm a little bit of a taskmaster, so just be ready. I can't do that with this. I can do this with a workshop, though, so you've been warned. All right. Uh, have you been able to see it at all? No, I'm looking for it. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. We can talk about that at the, at the end. So 
All right, so um, we're going to talk about um, armatures. Um, Creative Mark has these great new armatures um, that are, you've got the head, um, you can make them a head and bust, which is kind of the shoulders. Um, and then there's even figures. There's figures in two sizes, heads in three. Um, I guess I've got one of the, the medium size head under here. Um, and then here's our small little guy and our larger guy. So you can kind of see what the difference is when you're putting those together, what you've got underneath and then what you've got um, you, once you start putting some clay on. So um, now armatures and th this bigger one had a little bit more wire. They always give you extra wire because they don't know what you're going to be doing and you do need to, you know, if you've got your hand on your hips, secure that wire down deep inside the clay. So there's extra wire that can be trimmed if need be, or you can kind of uh, bend it, turn it up, hide it. Um, it's malleable, so you can actually bend it out to more, you know, figure for the pelvis and, and where those femurs come out from the body um, to kind of give a more natural stance. Obviously, we don't, we've got shoulders and not this, but that's with armatures, it's the basic shape. And then it's your job from there to move it and shape it and add some things to it to make it so that it's ready to work on. So what we're gonna do with one of these heads is we'll show you how you would do that. And let me move this guy because it would be easier to do this straight up. All right. So we talked about a 20 inch, um, a 15 inch, which is there, 13 inch. We'll work with the 15 inch, we'll work with mine. These come, um, and we talked about this last time, but just a quick recap if you missed it. Um, these come with just the natural wood, um, the sides that are unsealed, for mica top and bottom, okay? Now with Mine, I know I'm going to be using water, just regular earth clay, earthenware, okay? So I want to waterproof those. So I will take, which this is oil-based clay, so you don't have to do that. This doesn't have to be sealed. It doesn't have to be wet down with towels and wrapped in a bag. So you're not going to have any problems with this um, being exposed. What I did was took just a deck stain, um, just a basic, I think, Minwax deck stain, with color, sealed it uh, with three coats. I taped it off with painter's tape so that it would keep anything from getting on my, you know, up here on the formica. Did the outside edge with three coats, let it soak in nice and deep. You can tape that off or just, I just went over just a little bit to extra seal it. It's, it doesn't matter if it's clear or not. The only reason I went with this instead of shellac is shellac used to be cheap. I, there must be a run on it. Maybe it's made of gold. I don't know. It was expensive. So, um, so the deck stain was cheaper, waterproofed it the exact same way. And I got a color so that if I wanted to bring my, you know, red clay down, it, it at least kind of looked prettier. So, um, but I mean, there's blues, there's reds, there's greens, there's pretty much anything you want if you want something that's colored. So, so that's what that is. Now these come loose this piece isn't attached to this piece isn't attached to this piece so that it comes in a box where shipping makes more sense. Then you put them together. It's very easy. There's just a screw in the bottom. Um, I would take this because it's designed to fit tightly in. Some of them you may need to drill out just a little bit uh, depending on just with the wood expanding and contracting through shipping. Make sure you secure it with something like, I think I used the Gorilla Glue that's not the like super foaming. If you use that, just put a dab will do you, put it down in there, then put this in. You want this to be secured because the issue is if you take this and you're carrying this and you've got, you know, these are 25 pound blocks of clay. It doesn't seem that large until you pick it up. If you've got a full portrait head on here, you may have almost all of 25 pounds on here, which if it stops here at the neck, suddenly becomes very top heavy when you go to pick it up. And if you've got that on there and you've not secured this properly, 
and you start to lean or bend or whatever, what happens with 25 pounds? Yes, it's not, it's not pretty. And I'm just warning you now because I've seen that happen. Um, so you want to secure that in, in the wood. Okay. And, and make sure that the hardware underneath is nice and tight. So it's ready to go. Then this is smooth wire. This has some texture to it. So that's going to be great for grabbing clay. They've not done anything from here on out because we don't know what you're going to be doing with this. Um, there's all sorts of things that people do. You may really want to make this really large. It may be small. Um, if you're making this larger, you want a thicker gauge wire to put on here. If you're making it, you know, not much bigger, you want it to be a smaller gauge wire. So what I've got is the 1 16th inch. Um, probably if I was going to make this, you know, a super big heavy one and include possibly shoulders, make this a bust, I would go with the next size up which is going to take some bending and some cutting and I might need to cut it in pieces and wrap it. But I would want a thicker gauge on here to help grab all that weight of the clay because weight, you know, gravity wants to pull. And if this is super slick here, that can start to be a problem. If some people keep their sculptures really wet, some people keep them much drier. The wetter you keep it, the easier things are to slide. So just know that and put the gauge of wire on accordingly to kind of what your, how you think you might be tempted to work. Okay, I'm just gonna take this. This, this thin stuff can just be cut with regular scissors just because I don't want a whole bunch of it out in my face. There's a reason for that, Katie, because I've done it before, believe me. Okay, so I'm pushing that down in the center. Then I'm going to bring it around the outside and start up one of my little four uh, pieces. Okay, now you're going to want this to be somewhat close together, but you want to try to get it as tight as possible. And again, you can add more wire at any time. I've seen some people that like are super overkill that go back down at the opposite way. The more you put on where it grabs, the better it's going to hold. So it's just kind of whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, with the one we're going to show, I did the a little bit heavier gauge on it, but it's because I didn't know quite what I was going to do with it yet. And it takes a little bit more finger strength. So I've got that up there. I'm just going to bend that around. You guys see how this, I don't know if it would help for the side view, maybe to see that where I've done. Okay, perfect. So right there, you can see that texture added on. going to do the next little bit. If you make that tighter, you can go from, you can use a longer piece. I'm going to take that because I left that kind of there. Let's put this around the top to secure that before I come back down. And then I'm going to go back up. to keep my here we go hand out of the way this wire is super malleable you can take it and even do sculpture with it just on its own so but you can see in doing this this is giving some edge this is like a skeleton right Bones aren't smooth. If you look at a skeleton, there's all sorts of little kind of edges and nubs and things for the uh, muscles and ligaments and tendons to grab on. So you're just providing this with the surface 
to be able to grab onto your clay. Now, what we're gonna do is get to the middle. Kind of like when you sand something before you paint it, just don't give it some juice to grab onto. Um, well, opposite? well, sanding it, you, you mean scuff something, yeah. not, yeah, when you scuff something to give it, yeah, give it some, some grab. Uh, or what, when you gesso something, you're doing it to, to help give it mm -hmm. some tooth, give it some grab. All right, so if you can see that, that gives you that nice, and then you could go right back up the opposite way with that piece and even do it wider, but just, you know, a wider kind of curl, but that's going to give you, you can see with that, that gives you some nice kind of extra to put on there. All right. So I know people that sometimes will weave wire back and forth and make this crazy like catacomb of spider web wire in the middle to help support the clay. Um, and then there's other people that will make what's called a butterfly. I'm going to make the butterfly just with keys because I've got them here from your paintings. I never use them. So it's like, oh, look, there's something here. Um, typically you use about a two inch long uh, by one inch piece of wood and you cross them like a little crossing, you know, train track crossing guard thing. Um, I don't know if this might be easier to do Does from above. Happen? Yes. And I'm going to leave extra to do this because you can always clip extra wire if you need to, but okay. So you're going to want to come across I'm going to come across, go under and around. The way you do it's irrelevant. You just want it to grab on and hold. Okay. So you can see I've got it kind of held there. If you've ever done the little, what are those things that I've got or whatever, uh -huh. some sort of little thingy. Thing yeah. Um, you can do that and then that'll hold it on. And of course I didn't do it from across, so I'm going to do that. Um, then you take it and you twist it nice and tight. If you need to put a pencil or something in there to kind of help you twist it as tight as possible, you just want it to hold and grab. Okay. Now, if I was doing this at home, I would take this and um, probably knock the point off of this just with, you know, a little bandsaw or something. I'm just using this because we have this here and I did not have any wood at home that worked really well for this. And I've been known to, because you'll break sculpture tools sometimes, I've been known to take sculpture tools like where one's gotten split or, or chipped or something on the end and I'll just be like, oh, I don't have a piece of wood right now. So look, sculpture tool, but they, it works because what, right, what you right. want is this suspension here to help hold that weight in the middle and keep your clay from shifting either which way, right? For your, um, while you're adding this on. So I'm gonna take this. Sound a little, or was that a question? Yep. Breath. It was. Okay. <laughs> Ben right, on that? YouTube would like to know, when doing this, when you're not doing a demo, do you have a model or a picture you're referencing? of this mm -hmm. at this point Ben I don't because and and what what I'm doing is I I had <laughs> strangely two semesters of uh full body portrait where it was a half a person size from a live model in college and then I did um three semesters of portrait I had my gosh I took a lot of classes you could take you know if, if you're paying for 23 credits, you can take them. They don't tell you that. So I'm one of those people that likes to overdo it. And I like taking a lot of studio classes, but 
you have to build your own armature for the most part. I think he, if we already had our first class, he let us keep the armature that we had, or you could just check one out and then amend it. Um, but we had to build them. And actually a book that I've, that I'm, I'm gonna mention, this actually goes into how to do this. Um, it is, it's an ancient book. <laughs> this is my book from college. Um, actually my second one. I think I picked this up at a used bookstore because the other one had so much clay all over it that it was starting to get hard to read and it was getting really heavy. But it's Lewis Slobokin's Sculpture, Principles, and Practice. It's old. The pictures are obviously old film pictures, but he goes into how to build armatures. He goes into how to pack clay. He goes into how to do plaster, um, plaster molds where then you do a waste mold. He goes into how to even do, um, molds where, <coughs> excuse me, molds where you can pack the clay in and do like a clay shell and then pull it off and make a hollow sculpture that's from this, <coughs> excuse me, original positive sculpture. But then you just, you, you have these negatives that then you can make either a single sculpture. Yeah, probably a sip of coffee would be good. It's really dry in here today for the first time ever. Winter, winter is coming. You don't say that. I mean, it's true, but don't say that. So, so this, and this is something that you do need to take note of. This cannot be fired. And, and people all the time are like, find out after the fact, right? This can't be fired because this would explode. Because what happens with clay when you fire it, it does some expansion and contraction. You're supposed to get most of the moisture out of it first and let it dry before you put it in a kiln. But you have to have a thinner, and I brought a sculpture. This thickness is about as thick as you want something to be to put it in, I don't, maybe the overhead would show it better so that I can hold it up to the sculpture so they can see. That is about the thickness, this plinth, the, the sculpture, it's just a, it's a shell that's made on kind of, this is called a plinth, right? It's just a base that you, you put some pieces of wood around, you pack the clay in, and then you can build your sculpture on top of it. That is about the thickest you want to go where you can fire something without it being too thick and blowing up. Okay, so, um, and I've seen people do it thicker and I've seen what happened when their piece blew up with other people's stuff in the kiln, which is not, yes. I don't wanna be that person. No, you don't wanna, you, do, you don't wanna be the sculpture assistant that put that stuff in the kiln and no. blew up everybody's projects. So, which that, that was not me. I did, I did not do that. So, but just saying, so, so if you've got this head and you know that that's the thickest you can do, Obviously this is out for that, right? But the beauty of this is you can make a head, you can make either a rubber mold and make multiples of it. You, with the rubber mold, you can pour wax in it and get a thin, you know, a thin wax replica of your sculpture that you can then do in bronze. Not you, but I mean, you can send to a foundry and do in bronze. So, so this isn't like the, oh my gosh, this is all this can be and it just sits there you can do so many things with it. This is just a tool that helps support that clay to do the sculpture to then decide to go where from, okay? So, and even if you're doing oil clay with this, you still want to have all this wire wrapped and everything because the oil clay is, these are not light either. I think this is like a, this is a four and a half pound brick that feels like about 10. So it's, maybe it's just because it's so dense, but these are heavy. So, so you still need to have that on there because as you're pressing it, and this is because it's oil-based, has a little bit of tack. It's a like a, where it's a little slippery to work with because it's not like dry like the other clay where it absorbs kind of into your skin and pulls the moisture out. And so this doesn't stick even more so than the regular clay. So you've got to give it that kind of structure to stick on. Now we sell other wire sizes, right? Obviously this is, you're not wrapping this around this, but what this is, and especially if you want to do animals, especially if you want to do a giant head, 
you know, obviously these can only go so far before this is not going to support something, you know, double, triple life size. You can get this thicker gauge wire, which is the 3 16 inch, and you can make your own armature of this, okay? You can use PVC piping. You can use um, just like the, the, there's, you can use like metal piping for fences and things like that. I like hiding behind it though. <laughs> She's telling me to move it over. Feel safe. Um, so, so you can make your own custom armature. You can make a custom one uh, for people that's bigger. You can make ones for animals. You can do all sorts of stuff. It's just, these are really convenient because it takes a lot of time to build that first armature and a lot of know-how to make it stable, okay? And for Micah, it's not the easiest thing to get like a decent piece of that's substantial enough. There's a lot of tools and cutting involved. You're gonna need a cutoff saw um, or something like that or die grinder to be able to cut, you know, any pipe or things that you could make something really awesome with if you've got those tools woohoo, you're awesome and you're already like halfway there for sculpture. But for the rest of everybody else who doesn't have the stuff and this is gonna be kind of the extent of what they've got to make it, this is already ready for you to customize and go from there. And, and it's really, from other, other things that are on the market, other places, it's a super crazy good deal. These are super inexpensive. So, because the just the, the things it would take to buy this and then make your own are going to be probably two, possibly four times the expense, depending on how you want to pimp your armature head ride, okay? So, um, so there's that. Again, if you're using the little man, you, or woman, you, if you're using this individual, you, you will want to wrap these as well, okay? And you may even want to, um, once you get the feet down where, you know, where you want it to be, I, I would even suggest to use a heavy duty staple to hold them in place because if you don't, and even if you put a clay thing, I could hit this and knock this. Like if I was carrying this and bumped it, I could move that leg so fast without it being secured. So I would really recommend that you consider doing that and then just sealing it. You can pop it up later when you go to use this again. And the beauty of this is, I don't even know how old some of those ones were in sculpture class in college. This can be used again and again and again and again and again. And if you don't let the clay harden on it, you can take the clay off, put it in a bin, keep it wet and airtight, and you can use it again and again and again. Okay. So that's, uh, it's, it's just a really great thing. The, the the um, output of money into something like this is so low compared to painting and sculpt painting or, you know, even watercolor where you've got to have a bunch of brushes and you got to have a bunch of paint and then you got to have paper or you got to have canvas and then you need an easel and you know, you need this and you need that. This stuff, like clay is super cheap. This stuff, super reasonable. These tools, I think, and, and I only have about half of what I think I ordered. I, it, it was like 30 bucks for I don't even remember how many tools, some ungodly amount of tools, okay? So, all right. So how do you apply the clay to, to do this as you're working? Do we wanna see that? Would that probably be helpful? Okay, so this is done with the oil clay and we'll talk about how to use tools and stuff with this guy. Um, I'll show you how you would actually apply it to this and then we'll take this guy back here and we'll show kind of how you can do some different things. If you're wanting to do people and you're wanting to do a life-size head, I recommend calipers. We have, we have them at the Jerry's Artorama stores. I don't think that we've actually got them in line. I don't think we do. We might have them in a sculpture set, like a, a pottery set. Um, I know that I think there's a small set of calipers in that. Also a clay cutting tool that is in the pottery set. I just bought it at the store because we had them at the store and mine is indistinguishable from the job anymore. And it's kind of looks like you could garret somebody with this. <laughs> That's how mine looks too. Well, yeah, I mean, it's what it is, is it, it's what it is. It's a wire, like a, a little bit smaller than a piano wire and you hold it and you put it on the clay and you can cut 
blocks of clay. Seems like a really dumb thing. Like, well, some other things should work. It's, it's just, it's a godsend. These things are amazing and, um, and fought over in a class because trying to get that, especially if the clay is a little hard, you can cut stuff like a chunk off to be able to use for yourself to uh, run it through a clay conditioner or whatever you need to do. If it's too hard, this is a useful tool. Calipers are a useful tool because what you're gonna do is measure the person, you come back over, if you're doing life size, you put it on your sculpture. So each time you're measuring features, how far are the eyes apart, you know, from pupil to pupil, how far is it the width of the, you know, outside the ear, front to back. And, and being a model is a pain in the butt, but because you've got people coming up and going, yeah, and you have to get used to not doing that. But this is, these are, uh, if you're doing life size, crazy helpful tool. Still helps for even like a person that's not life size because you can look at the measurements of the head and then go, is this seven heads high? Because that's the almost always this the gold standard for how tall a person is seven heads high so these help with other things um and there's other measurements and in, in that book goes into them other books go into them that you know if the head height and width it's going to have to do with other parts of the anatomy so it helps you make a sculpture that's more believable as a person or a bust okay um, another awesome tool, and I didn't have these on the, on the list because I had them at home and I was having problems with the clay and the catalyst tools, <laughs> this, they have like these horrible textured edges, which are great because you can use them. If you're doing a big head, you can take off and smooth an area with the texture and then smooth it back down. They can cut clay like wicked fast. So I've got one of them in my clay bag. Stored in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just stabbed it in. Because the one side's smooth, right? Mm -hmm. Plus they get grungy and that creeps me out. I I'm not a neat freak, but I but I am weird about things things on me. And sculpture class got me over that. I still don't like it, but I've learned to live with it, right? Because clay pulls the moisture out of your hands and it's creepy so at least I don't have to then like feel compelled to go scrub that off because you don't want a bunch of clay down your sink so you can take it and just cut so easy to cut pieces or cut chunks down the side uh I had never had a tool like that in college gosh if I had those are, and the catalyst ones and they come in big bigger pieces um as well but that's a perfect palm sized tool to just put right there. This one's gross, so you can't see it. Cleaner, put right there <laughs> and cut with. So um, when you apply, and it sounds silly, but if you're covering larger areas like this, when you apply clay, you want to, and this is very nice soft clay. This doesn't need conditioning at all, this clay is just amazing like almost maybe too soft you want to do it as as strange as it sounds roll a little sausage is that how you guys learned to roll a little sausage there's something about the way it goes on yeah that it can be then pushed in so you're having you're not if you sit and do like little piece by piece it can push off other pieces because you're just doing a little part that you're mashing on. So you want to roll a sausage. You can do them bigger or smaller with armature. It's fine to just mush it on. See how nicely that grabs onto that? Okay, so if I put this over here, it starts spinning around, see? There's nothing that's holding that from sticking because there's no texture on it. So what you would be doing in here is you can just take a ball and push that down. And keep adding right up. You can even push this up some, add up under it, 
and then push it around the that little butterfly. And this is like the best part because it's very gratifying because you see it coming together like really fast. And you're like, look at this, this is awesome. And then for the rest of a semester long class, you're like, I added too much. I didn't add enough. Uh, Okay, so we've got that, so I can push that down to where that's at, and I can start pushing the clay in around it. And with that, you can just kind of take little bits and pieces. All that's about is that's gonna hold those sides in as it goes. It's like fireworks, isn't it? That's weird. But see how fast that builds on that wire that's already on there? Starting to get a pretty good chunk on there. And you can see with, from the side, see how I've smoothed it out there as I've added. But you can see it kind of gushing through now that I've got it around. So you would just take that. And, and there is, and I don't know if that book talks about it. I know we've made our own, but you can make a tool just out of a, like a little piece of two by four where you chop it off, you shape it so that it's kind of rounded. It's almost got like a handle to it. And then it's kind of rounded with a kind of flat side and you can use it to actually whack the clay and pack it super tight. But we don't sell wood tools and I don't know what everybody else's wood skills, woodworking skills are. So there's probably alternatives. Um, you know, even like, I don't know, maybe even like a, like a any sort of like paddle type of like an old butter churn paddle or something mm -hmm. would would work like the old wooden spatulas where exactly. if it's got a big old. if it's got a big head yeah. and it's hardwood you can take it and kind of whack it um even these were the catalyst ones that are bigger that are harder you could take it and use it in your hand to kind of thump the clay in um you just want to pack it once you kind of have a general shape uh, because then it just makes it nice and compressed. You're not going to have little air pockets and things like that that could potentially um, give you problems, okay? So so that's packing that on there. So let's switch to uh, the one that I've got back here. And we'll talk about uh, how you're going to want to keep these if you're using um, the traditional kind of clay like a pottery and sculpture clay not the oil base not the plasticina and things like that okay so i've got a garbage bag it goes all it's a heavy duty one number one you want it to be heavy duty because if you're keeping this in here and even though these corners are rounded they can still puncture it over time um if you're doing a full size head this is like a large like a 13 gallon garbage bag you're probably going to want even larger like maybe a regular 40 gallon trash bag and if you use a sculpture stand which that's fabulous because then you can move it roll it around out of the way you're going to want an even larger bag but so the nice thing about a large super large bag is and you if you've got it on a sculpture stand you can pull it down out away from the work right but it kind of catches all those little gross bits and pieces that fall this kind of looks like a, like i feel like we should put eyes over here and it should be like a little ghost. Okay. How would okay. be appropriate. This is just a crappy puppy towel where they've chewed it. You can see. It's wet. You soak it. You wring it out. You use that. You can kind of see some of the, if you do the above so they can see, there's still some wet from the towel on there. You can see just that that was wet in the bag. It's really moist. There's some water. This is why you seal that wood 
okay, because you've got the clay in there. So this can go either down here around your face or kind of wherever you want it to be out of the way. I'm going to move him over here. Remember this little cool gizmo? It's very small, but these are perfect for putting on it. Make sure it's centered and not off. Then I can move it around, which makes it a lot easier to work on because otherwise you start building it up way too high on one side and then keep going from there. Now, this has not been proportioned out to a head, but it's, it's, it's built on. You can see that it's on there. There's some neck. This isn't going to be a bust. Otherwise, we go and kind of do part of the shoulders and a little bit of the chest, right? Like those classic, you know, Greek sculptures that you see. This type of thing is going to be your best friend, the Aquamus, where you can just kind of <laughs> mist it before you put that towel back on and then mist the towel again if the towel is still good and damp because you want this to remain wet. Otherwise, it starts getting very hard and then when you're trying to, to um, use tools on it, it can get super crumbly and dusty, right? Um, and, and most sculpture classes run, like studio classes, run about three hours. So you need to mist those periodically just to keep kind of that moisture up. Um, now, with the tools, so we've got just all these different shapes. And it might be, I don't know, if maybe from the side view would be the best for this so we can just look at some of huh oh they're oh, perfect okay so some of these have really strange shapes like that's got a little cut out um that's probably good for pottery or something because you could probably put it down in as you're working and that's an, like a nice rounded edge this would be good for i mean you can push on like that see how that kind of compacts that clay when i was talking about how you would compact that clay on. See, I did not compact this before I left so that you could see how much that actually pushes that in. See, this side is much kind of more packed out. This really can compact that clay. So that's a nice shape for that. This flat side would even be good if it's a, a flatter you know, area, the side of the head or something like that. The one side is flat. Now, with the beauty of these, you can take these if you've got any sort of, whether it's a, um, like a power sander, you could take it, uh, if you've got a Dremel with little sanding tools, you can customize these to get a super fine knife blade sharp. You can get it rounded, make it more dull. This part has like a sharp, like if you were gonna do a mouth, you could cut in to get kind of a line so you could see where to work from there. See how that can cut in pretty deep because of how sharp this is. And then you cut in from this side. That's not where the mouth would be, but just so you can kind of see what I mean. But that'll really cut pretty deep. A tool like that's handy for that. This has a more blunt one, so you could push it to start forming where you want that kind of eye socket to be has that nice shape to do that. This one's handy because look at how nice this little, and I would probably take this and tweak this tool even more. And what I would do with getting these, if you do know that you want to play with them and tweak them, get a bunch of different shapes and sizes, oil them first with something like tongue oil or even just like a, um, linseed oil or something like that where it soaks in, wipe off the excess after you've sanded them, okay? Because that will help keep the moisture in the tool. They won't get so like dry and gritty and dirty. Um, so they'll stay nice and conditioned. They won't get brittle because it keeps the wood in condition because these are, are small thin pieces of wood. And although they're, you know, a nice quality hardwood, you want them to stay um, where, I mean, I've got tools that I've had since the late eighties from, from sculpture class that are in beautiful condition. But every time I take them out and it's been a while, I will oil them, clean them and oil them again before I use them. And it just keeps them so that this isn't going to dry it out then again. So something like that, I would take and make even a nice little point where I could do nostrils with 
Um, some of these have kind of a nice, you know, if, it, if this head was bigger, that would work great for a nostril. Some of these have an edge like this, if you can see that, where it's got some cuts in it, right? You can take that and actually use this to remove clay. Like if you're wanting to smooth something over, you've put too much on, you can take it and use it as kind of a general cutting tool to smooth that shape, even push the excess from the tool up on there. And then you can go back over that and smooth that with a, with a wet paintbrush if you want it smooth. I don't like that much texture, but I do like some texture. So this is a great tool for, um, you know, being able to lift and move clay super easily with those teeth. I might even gouge that so that they're a little finer pointed um, and smoother, uh, kind of like this. If you can see that texture on that tool against the clay, that would... Does that say on there, is that like, does it say on there if it's the CD23 or CD24? Oh, for these catalyst for ones? catalyst ones, can you see on there? Does it say on this there? This is a C24. Woo, good call. Did you know? I looked up. Cheetah. Um, I'm not going to spit on it. Let's see if I can get the clay off. C23. Yes. So, uh, but, but they've got all sorts of different ones. Mm -hmm. And it's just nice because it's silicon. So these will last for forever. As long as you don't have it out in the sun where they get, you know, brittle. But, um, and they're, you can hang them on a hook when you're done. Because they got those little holes. Or, I mean, through the clay that's there. I could hang it on a hook. Yeah. Ta-da! Um, but yeah, those those are fantastic. Now... They're called contours. Yes. Contour your hand. That's a good, a good name. So anyway, so there's, there's tools for pretty much every shape that you can think of um, that c can either just be used as is and then you can say, oh, I like the shape, but I could refine this more. Or you could just use them like they already are, or really like do some crazy modifications. So, um, cause we all don't have time to go get a tree branch and make our own. <laughs> this is a good way to have some tools and, and be able to start working relatively quickly. Um, should we show this clay cutting tool just from the side, just so people will know what I mean? Just why this is so satisfying. It's it's just a wicked. I'm gonna roll it in so it's not quite so wide. Okay. So you can just cut like pieces off so easily. You can even cut stuff off a sculpture if it's just going horribly and you want to take the excess off. I mean, you could you could make something and make like a mask like this and use this to, to cut edges. You know, build it up first and then be able to cut some nice hard edges instead of trying to model them. Um, now, there are clay tools that have a, uh, and, and probably everybody's seen those, that where it's got like kind of a spoon looking bottom to it like this maybe, and then they've got a wire end. Some of those are for pottery and some of those are for sculpture. The ones for pottery are smooth on both sides so that you can use it to kind of push material or make kind of a smooth, not so much a cut, but kind of like a, because it doesn't have a tooth. It's just, it's used for kind of smoothing something over. Uh, the sculpture ones are gonna have little teeth. You can take, if you've got tools and you are really careful and you wear safety equipment, please, gloves and glasses, because you don't need metal in your eye. If you ever have an MRI, they like to ask about that. Um, they, they do, and it's like, oh, I think, well, why would anybody, oh, yeah, I've done some stuff where that could be possible, you know? Um, you can put those little teeth in it, but um, those, are, those are something that helps as well, that then you can use those to cut and push, but they only have one end to them, and they tend to all be the exact same. So 
these are kind of nicer because they've got multiple ends and multiple shapes. Um, and then you can just use other cutting tools to, to do the reductive um, kind of part of it. Do we want to look at the, the person and... And I also have a clay gun. We could we could try that with the clay too. Okay, so this is by no means finished, but it's built up. There's some areas that, um, and I will take a sculpture and put it away. And oh, his foot got mashed in the car. Sorry, buddy. Um, now I'm gonna put red clay hands all over it. It wasn't should have done the terracotta. Right, Bert. Yep. Yep. That's okay. Um, So the beauty of the oil clay versus, you know, we just talked about the earthen based clays is that this can be out and open and it's not going to dry out. Okay. You can cast things from it. I don't know. I don't, in saying that, I don't know how well these hold up because these you want to kind of let dry a little bit before you do a cast so that they're a little more rigid. So ears hold shape and stuff like that. Um, this has actually gotten pretty firm. It's still malleable, but it's pretty firm compared to when I made it. So I think that it would probably be fine if it's kind of let sit out. Um, I would suggest if you have this in a studio where you do other things like pastels or uh, spraying of any paint or things like that, that you probably keep just a bag over it. Um, you wouldn't have to tie it off or anything. I know that um, I kept a bag over it, but you can see that the bag kind of moved around, so it's a little dusty on the bottom. Um, but you can um, keep adding to this at any given time. This is this is what I started with. Was a block, so that that much of that has been used for this little guy. Um, probably to to really tweak it out and make them perfect. I'd probably use about half of what's left, maybe. Um, I might build more of a base. But with this, it's a lot harder to roll those sausages because this is not, um, not as malleable initially. So with this, what I did was just would pinch off a little bit and kind of make it like a, a little ball and then add like that. I don't know which way is going to be the easiest to see this. If it's sideways, if it's front ways. Both ways. Ta-da! <laughs> you can have it both ways. So, it's a little easier for them to see in 3D that way. Yes. So, and, and this person's smaller than that. So sausages make sense for like a bigger head. This can be toned down. So you just pinch off enough of a spot or, you know, use your catalyst tool to... That does not cut as, as easily as the clay, Katie. So that's good to know. It cuts, but it's not as easy because it's a firmer, firmer clay. clay. So, um, so you can just keep kind of adding and building. Now this isn't so soft, so it's not gonna get those air pockets. You can push it down and it pretty much stays right there. So that's how easy that is to use. It's nice stuff. It's got a little bit mush. So you'd round that out. And then, I mean, you can start adding and doing whatever as you go along. But How you can large see. How sculpture could you do with that? With, that with this? Layer. Yeah, the plastilina. As big as you wanted. It yeah. would just be expensive as crap. Because <laughs> plastilina, I mean, for what it is, it can be re reused 9,000 times. Sure. And you don't have to have wet bags of stuff and the smell of clay. And uh, this doesn't. can kind of smell it if I like stick it in my nose, but you know how sensitive I am about smells. So it's not, I'd not noticed it. So that means it probably doesn't smell. Yeah. Um, it would just be, it's not cheap. It's not like the earth clays <laughs> dirt cheap because it's clay. I don't know. Um, I mean, shipping, shipping is going to be really expensive on this is the only thing. It's always good to, um, at Jerry's stores, you can get all sorts of different types of throwing clay and sculpture clay, okay? You can get the plastilina, you can get all sorts of stuff. When you start shipping this stuff, unless you're 
putting in like a for you know a, with jerry's the plastilina comes in the four and a half pound bricks so those if you meet the minimum shipping requirements then you could add 27 of them on if they're in stock and and get free shipping on it which would be the way to do that if you're going to do that but um but with the earth clay that's why we don't even care anymore because i think we had people that were kind of doing that and then it's like you know starts getting a little bit ridiculous so um so jerry stores have them um otherwise look at local ceramics places will tend to have different types of clay um if there's arts leagues uh or even if you're in a city and they've got like where we've got Sertoma and things like that, um, they have clay that you can buy direct from them. So, um, and this stuff is super easy, just like with, um, with this. If anything, this is firmer, so I can really use this to start flattening out the form on it, then press down and smooth it down to model and shape. Ben wants to know if you can mix the earth clay with the oil clay. Okay, Ben, that's a good question. You can do anything you want. Now, you? now the issue is going to be this can sit out all the time like this with no problem unless it's super dusty, then cover it. This cannot, okay? And this type of stuff is, um, I mean, you're going to, this isn't something you're going to put on an armature and let's sit around for the next 20 years, okay? Um, this you potentially could if you just wanted to work on one sculpture forever, you know? So I, it's, it's not like mixed media where you could just be like, because this would have to be fired or it's going to dry and fall apart if you leave it out, where this would be fine, right? So, but it, I mean, even this, these are modeling, clays for modeling, all right? Unless you're going to take this and make this in a way that's not on an armature that can be fired, this is not a finished artwork. What's the finished artwork from something like an oil-based clay is the mold of it and the reproduction of it is your final artwork, okay? Because you can't just take this oil-based, I mean, I, unless there's some crazy museums out there, you couldn't take this and just... Be like, ta-da, here's my sculpture. Now give me some money, right? Because number one, you don't want this stuff in there. Um, so, I mean, that's gonna, that's kind of what the difference is. These, these are, armatures are designed for an art, making an artwork that's the launching pad for making the final artwork. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, now that being said, I, a friend, um, actually Celia from that we all know and love that's uh, been with Marabou and, and I guess Pubio and other brands with us on the show, um, sent me uh, a link the other day to something fantastic online and somebody made a giant Great Dane sculpture out of slabs of clay and then painted with some sort of like glazes and fired no clue how they did it and it was life-size and it was very rough so but I, I mean i don't think they could have done an armature so i have no idea how they did it where it stood and fired so there's bound to be some really cool ways you can do stuff without an armature but you may have to build something pop it hot i mean i've heard of people using balloons and weird mm -hmm. stuff but eventually it all has to be taken out of there yeah. right so, so these are, you know, something that you need to remember. This is never going to be a final artwork for armatures. I had a question actually based on what you just said. Okay. Can you paint the plastilina? This, it never hardens. What I would say you do if you want something like this with an armature where, I mean, you could cut that potentially off if you used the air hardening clay and then it can be painted but this is an oil base so I don't think it's it's always going to stay it hardens but it never it hardens as far as you have to work it to soften it back up to reuse but it never hardens like like um ceramic okay like something that's fired it never hardens like the air dry clay you could do something on something like this and do air dry clay but then you've always got this stuck in the back, right? 
So the air dry clay, yes, you could paint that. This, theoretically you could with oil-based paints, but why would you? Because it's not gonna stay. Yeah. Just, it, it, you, you saw that I damaged his foot and I mean, that was just being moved around a little, so it's... Like trying to paint some jelly. Yes. Yes, and I don't know. And who knows what the chemicals in this that make it oil-based could potentially do your paint or vice versa, Good right? Point. Or if it makes it smelly or if it... We just don't know. So... And guys, it's okay not to paint sculpture. You don't have to. It's sculpture. It's okay to be natural. It's about the form. All right, any last questions for me um, on this? Now this book that I talked about, you can pick it up at a whole bunch of, I think they made a bazillion copies. Why, I'm not sure, but I think there were so many editions from like the 40s and 50s and beyond. A lot of used bookstores will have copies for super cheap. So, or even like uh, any online booksellers you can probably get that do used books, you can probably find them. Um, so it's a great reference book. If you're, it, and it spells it out, um, it's almost like the old, you know, whatever for dummies, that's the red and black, like Cliff Notes, how to do stuff books, mm -hmm. you know? It's very much written like that where it makes sense with little like, illustrations and stuff so the one thing I do have with clay is I want to resist the urge to bite it I don't know why <laughs> well it looks like a big chunk of chocolate Look, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's I just need some it. ears for like the chocolate <laughs> bunny did you have another question not yet okay I'm looking. Okay. Uh, did you find out about Art of the Carolinas, about what the uh, I did. cutoff date is? Um, I don't see the date on there yet. Okay. We can tell you next week on that. Yeah. Um, or if you're in the Jerry's. Don't wait because there are already no. some selling out. Oh, no. There's, there's, there's uh, like Mike Rennie's and stuff. Yeah, Mike Rennie's got 30. Two out of three or three out of something? 30, 30 students. Yeah. So they will sell out. Um, so definitely don't wait for that. Um, and all sorts of different instructors are doing different things as far as how they're going to kind of where you'll actually be able to show them your artwork that you're working on and troubleshoot things. I think with mine, because I really like to make people work. It's so fun. Um, I think what I'm going to do is have a private Facebook group for my, each of my classes afterwards so that they can, um, talk and share the stuff or ask questions uh, or if there's things they do after the class that they want feedback on, we'll have that ability for about a month. So I'll do that so that maybe cut it off at the end of, like right before Christmas from my workshops. So so it's not just for mine, it's because three hours um, if in person to me is like tons of time and I can really in interact with people more and help them individually. But so I, I'm gonna offer that for my students just to make it easier. I have one final question for yes. each one. The delay got us. That's fine. Last question from YouTube. Why use the white clay if it never hardens? Um, because you can keep going back. Like, if you know it's going to take you a long time. Like, there's some sculptors that work on sculptures for years. Okay? It's not like a, a painting where an 8 by 10 you're probably going to be done with it in a month at the most if you're painting with a two-year brush. And you can work on it every day. A sculpture takes a lot of time and effort, especially if you're going for realism. So um, in, in Portrait Head in college, we had a whole semester. It was two classes, three hours a day, and you were expected to, on your own outside of class, put in double that time per class. So that's a lot of work on one sculpture, just to get it to a point of where it was supposed to look just like the person. Okay, so this air dry clay is fantastic because you don't have to deal with bags. You don't have to deal with potential mold and mildew if you're in a gross area like North Carolina and trying to do this outside in the summer, you know. Um, clay does sometimes get mold and mildew in it. Um, so, and, and not that that's anything, you know, unless you have, if you have mold or mildew allergies, that's an issue. Ta-da, oil clay. Welcome. Allergy free <laughs> for that, you know. It comes in multiple colors, so you can get something that looks 
more like a traditional color. I think they have black, white, gray, where it looks like stone, like limestone. I mean, there's different colors, so you're not stuck with either, you know, just a, a traditional clay color. You can keep going back to this as long as you need to work on this thing. Okay, and then you can cast it, and then you've got the clay to play with again that's still mold and mildew free. With these, you need to let them harden and some to a point where you can ha they can bear that weight of that plaster, and sometimes you can't always salvage all the clay or it has to be soaked for a while to get it to really be usable again. So, so this is something that you can continue to you know, work on and, and reuse easily. Yeah. That's fine. Can you ball up aluminum foil to put inside the armature to save on weight? The problem with that is then your weight is all around the outside and nothing like firm is holding it up and it could get really slack. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no, your tin foil could start squishing down. It's just, I mean, with with the clay, I mean, we had we had giant 50 gallon bins of clay that everybody worked out of. There were like four or five in there. So I don't know how much clay was on it, but this is not a life size head. It was this big of, you know, and I did the, a whole bust of the last one that I did. And it, I would imagine it was probably 40 pounds at least on there. Thank goodness it was on a big heavy duty sculpture stand where I could roll it around and never had to lift that thing. But, um but you want it to be able to, you know, that metal to be able to bear the weight. And if it's solid, it's going to be a lot easier to do that. Sounds it. Yeah, I mean, now I will say maybe you could use mesh, wire mesh or something yeah, like that. Well, that would help hold it. But by the same token, there's gonna be a lot of clay in your wire mesh that's not gonna be able to be used. It won't um, live there forever. Yes. So, but clay is cheap, guys. That's, that's, don't cut corners with something like that. Um, also, if there's any air left in there, it could potentially dry the sculpture from the inside out, which is something I just now thought about. So, um, just, it's, clay is what, maybe 20, 22 bucks, a 25 pound thing. I mean, so a sculpture with the armature and everything's, and tools is going to be on well under a hundred bucks to make probably. So. Any last questions? Okay. All right. So, uh, in January and February, we will do a, how we'll, we'll have a finished sculpture. We will two, we'll do two and we'll talk about how you would make a plaster mold. I'll do one side and then I'll show you how to do the other. Um, and then we will talk about how you can make a rubber mold, which for something like this um, is going to be much easier to take off and um, and be able to kind of reassemble and then do something like a, a wax pour or something from uh, because the, the plaster is a waste mold. That means once you pull that off and your sculpture is taken out, Nothing is there until you fill it with something and then you have to chip the outside off. So it can be a little scary. So a rubber mold is nice because if you mess up with the pourings or whatever, you've got, you can make multiple, multiple, multiples. So, um, so we'll do that. And then the second one in like February, we'll do, um, the plaster bandage and we'll incorporate some of the mesh with that. So you can see what that's like. And we'll do like maybe a small kit and it's something where everybody can play along. We'll make it very simple. All righty. So next week we are going, we're, we're coming up on the holidays and especially with COVID counts getting higher and higher. I really think a lot of people, and I know my family in, is included where they're, if they're doing any sort of Thanksgiving, it's only going to be with immediate family members who they live with, which is, it's really creepy, weird, unprecedented times. So um, so what we're going to do next week is like a feel good episode where we're going to make some cards that you can mail to send some cheer to people that you love and that you can't be with, whether it's friends, to cheer them up, whether it's family, whoever, but we're going to, um, do some watercolor cards. We'll talk about how you can decorate envelopes. We'll talk about some ideas, maybe just for 
doing cards and we'll just do a little paint along uh, maybe like a fall thing like leaf and a some acorns or something that's kind of thanksgiving -y, but not i mean i guess anymore with half of the northern part of the country it'd be snow so <laughs> But we'll be optimistic and do leaves. I think that that's just better. They're under the snow. So, um, so tune in next week for that. Um, if you want to see any of the supplies that we're using for that, it's JL176. Um, and it's got the, the kit that we're using. Um, and again, www.artofthecarolinas.com for virtual workshops. Um, they are still accepting students. And take a look and see. There is bound to be a workshop just for you. All right, you guys take care and we will see you next week. Be safe.